personal finance practice problem using Excel. Projected healthcare costs. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. The example in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're basically looking at the current healthcare costs and trying to project into the future what future costs will be possibly taken into consideration say inflation the second tab is going to be the practice tab and this has some pre-formatted cells so you could work the practice problem with less excel formatting the third tab is the blank tab where we just have the information on the left if you don't have any of this you could just open up a blank worksheet and i would first put down the baseline formatting set down the base beat before you put anything on top of that music stream compilation i don't know what i'm talking right click on it i would usually go to the formatting down here format the cells and i would start out if you have a blank sheet with currency the brackets and no decimals and no dollar sign that's my baseline formatting typically i'm not going to hit okay because i already have this set up i'm just going to x out of it then put your information on the left hand side changing cells as needed such as this cell being a percentage and then making a skinny c column we're ready to go and that's good practice to do because anytime you set up a worksheet you typically want your data separate from your worksheet pulling from the data making your worksheet adjustable okay so we got the healthcare costs we're going to say our seven thousand and what we're going to use is our future value of money to project what they are going to be in the future so we can kind of get an idea of our time value of money we always got to be working in our time value of money because there's a thing called inflation and so we know that the dollar is going to get weaker in the future so we could say what if inflation is like two percent right now inflation is looking like it's going to go above that so historically as of this recording inflation has been kept quite low to the point where people actually you know think of it as not really even a factor really right but uh, historically, before that, inflation can get quite uh, can be quite significant. So we'll say 2%. That's like the, what they aim for on the Fed. But notice they could go way above that in terms of inflation. That's going to increase the cost of health care and so on for budgeting purposes and whatnot into the future. So how much would, uh, would be spent in 10 years then? So let's say 10 years into the future, what would the health care costs be out then? So we could do our future value calculations. I'm gonna I'm gonna first start off in D here. Let's put our let's call it just future value, future, future val cost, future value cost. I'm gonna make column D a little bit wider, putting my cursor between D and E and opening it up a bit. So we're just gonna do a future value calculation. You could start with equal. I like to start with negative because the result will then be a positive number. It's probably better or more proper to put the negative inside the formula, but I think this is the fastest way to do it. So I say negative, future value, there it is. You could double click on the future value here or just put shift nine for the brackets. Here's our argument down below. So we're gonna say, let's pick up our interest rate, which I'm gonna pull from the data, that 2% right there, comma, takes me to the next argument which is the number of periods. The number of periods is just gonna be the 10 years. We're just gonna do this in years so we don't have to convert it to months or anything fancy or tricky like that. And then comma, and then the payments. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because remember this is not an annuity. Then we're not putting 7,000 in time after time. So we're skipping that one and we're gonna say comma, comma, or you could put a zero there, comma, comma, chameleon. And then we're gonna go to the present value and that's going to be, then be the 7,000, 7,000. So the future value then, we could close up the brackets, but we don't have to. It would close it for us if we just hit enter. There it is, the 8553. So we think 33. Three. So we would think if we're paying 7,000 now, there's interest at 2% for 10 years. You would think that the costs in 10 years would be future value costs, $8,533, for example. Let's try to map that out in a little bit so we can understand it a bit more. Let's put, let's make this one first. Let's format this. Don't get ahead of yourself, font group. I hate waiting for myself. I'm so slow. I always want to get ahead of myself because I just hurry up self, hurry up. And then this, this one needs to be white, black and white. Let's make this one blue. This is going to be font group. We're going to go to the bucket down here 
And then if you don't have that blue, you can go to the more colors down below. And then we're going to be in the standard here. And I'm going to pick up that blue right there. That's the one. And OK, OK, font group. And let's put a border around it. Border blue. Let's do our let's do it year by year so we can understand what's happening on a year by year basis. Just to just to better understand our formulas. I want to make a skinny F to make a skinny F. I want it to be the same skinniness as skinny C over here. So I'm going to select skinny C home tab clipboard format paint it and then just click right on the skinny F with the paintbrush brushing the paint of the skinniness on it. So then I'm going to say this is going to be years. Let's say there's going to be an increase due to inflation and the cost and see what happens year over year. We're going to make this into our our header kind of formatting, selecting these three cells, G to I1, G to I1, home tab. We're going to go then font group, bucket, black and white on the lettering. Let's center those alignment and center them. Got to get centered, people. If you want to do this kind of work, you got to be centered. This is going to be zero, one, two. Let's select those three and we're going to use our auto fill formatting function by putting our cursor on the fill handle and just dragging it down. You get the little number there. We're taking it down to 10, taking it down to 10 because there's 10 periods, 10 years, you'll recall. And then we're going to go up top home tab alignment and let's center that up, center it. And I'll make this one a little bit skinnier, skinnerize it, thin it up, thin it up, please. And then we're going to start with the cost of 7,000 in period zero. And then if it increases by 2% because of inflation, this is what happens to cost over time when inflation gets out of hand. And notice if we do this properly with our data on the left, we can increase the inflation and say, well, what happens if inflation goes crazy to like 8%, which it looks like it's on the way or like 14% or like 20, like what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy. 7%. I've never seen that before. What kind of world is we, are we living in? But that's not too uncommon, historically speaking. So we got we to gotta be okay with that. And then we're going to pick up the 2%. And I could say F4 because I want to copy that one down, putting a dollar sign between the B and the 2 and copy it down. And then this one is going to be, it was 7,000 now plus 140. So in year one, we would then have the 7,140. Let's do it a couple more times. So I'm just going to say this equals to 1,740 times 2%. I'm going to say F4, make an absolute dollar sign before the B and the two, and then tab. This now equals to 7,140 plus the 134, 143, sorry, dyslexic. And then this one's going to do it again. So this is going to be equal to 7,283 times the 2% F4 dollar sign B dollar sign 2 tab. So this now equals the 7,283 plus the 146, taking it to 7,428. And then if I select those two, because this one's absolutized, we absolutize the item that was outside of the table we're working in. It's in the data set. And then I'm just going to drag it down with the fill handle, taking that fill handle, dragging it down. There we go. And we get to that same 8533 that we had up here, same 8533. And so there it is. Let's go ahead and border blue eyes, border blue, selecting this stuff. We're going to go to the font group, border and blue, por favor. Now, just to see how this present value stuff works, just let's let's now and this, this time value of money calculation, let's calculate the present value just so we could we could get back and say okay well if this is the future value now that we calculated after 10 years and that's in 10 years value numbers what if i discount that back to the current day we should get back to the 7000 right just to see how these formulas work so let's try it let's say a present value i'm going to say negative instead of equal because i think that's the easiest thing to do and then we're going to say present value pv could double click on this or I could say shift nine and I'm going to say the rate then is going to be up here at the two percent two percent again comma and then the number of periods I could pick up this 10 10 periods and then comma and then it's not a, it's not a payment because we're not doing an annuity so I'm going to skip that function comma comma or you could put a zero and I'm going to take the future value 10 years out we've got the 8,533 
If I bring that back to the current day, enter, I get the 7,000 just to see how this kind of kind of works. Let's do one more kind of table on this. I'm going to go to the font group brackets and you might say, well, uh, maybe I want to, maybe I want to, I could do this with a future value of one kind of calculation. So let's, let's make a table like that. I'm going to put the, the uh, F here and make a skinny. I'm going to go to the paintbrush and make a skinny J. And so let's say we have, let's say we have year and then uh, let's say this is the base year amount and then we've got the the future value so so now let's say that we're gonna make this our board our header format home tab font group we'll make this black and white let's put a centering on it let's make the years going once again from zero one two selecting those three using our fill handle to drag down to 10 again and I'm going to make this a little smaller. I'm going to center it, alignment centers. And then the and then we're going to say that the base year is equal to uh, 7,000. I'll keep this. This is at 7,002. And let's say F4 on that one. I'm going to say F4. So the base year is going to be 7,000 all the way down. And then we might do our future value calculations now, each one. So we could do it like a future value of one calculation for each period, for example. So I might say then this equals the future value, let's say negative future value, shift nine. The rate is going to be the 2%, the 2%, and let's say F4 on that one so that I can copy it down. So it's an absolute reference dollar sign B dollar sign two comma number of periods. I'm going to say this is one year out now. So I'm going to say that's one year out comma. We don't have a payment because it's not an annuity. So another comma, it's going to be the present value and the present value is going to be the 7,000 brackets and enter. And so that's another way we can kind of set up this table, getting a year by year breakout. Let's do it a couple more times. I'll copy it down then negative future value shift uh, nine the rate is going to be the two percent i'd say f4 if i was to copy it down dollar sign before the b and the two by the way you only need a mixed reference but an absolute one is just easy to do oftentimes the number of periods i'm just going to pick up is the two now so we're talking this seven thousand two years out into the future comma no payment because it's not an annuity so another comma the present value is the base year of the 7,000 again. So that gives us this 7283. Let's do it one more time and then we'll copy it down. Negative future value, shift uh, nine. The rate is gonna be the 2% F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the two, comma. Number of periods is now the three. And then comma, no payment because it's not an annuity. So two commas, uh, present value is once again the 7,000 and then close it up, enter, there we have it. So I can copy this down using the autofill handle, and that's another way we can get to basically this stream of numbers. I think this, this format is kind of nicer because you get to see the increases here, but just another way just to see how these kind of future value and present value formulas work. You can see the increases as well by adding another col column, which would be a running balance column, which would say, okay, that would be this number minus the prior period, right? And then you get the the increase that we can say in increase. So you might see these, it's useful to know different ways to put these together because one, it gets you a, a better understanding of how the present value, future value calculations work. And two, other people are gonna do it differently. They're just gonna see it in their head differently than you. So, so when you're talking to other people, they might do different stuff. I'm gonna copy that down. So there's basically our interest. Let's call this base year. You also may not need the base year because you could use these formulas pulling from this cell over here. And so that you could still do this with like three columns, for example. And then let's make this the same format. Let's put the border blue around it. Font group, blue and borders. So that looks good. 
can make this a little bit more skinny. Let's, let's, I'm going to say two non-adjacent cells. I'm going to select this column and column K and make them both a little skinnier. So they're like the same skinny. You know what I'm talking? Same skinny. So then, of course, you can adjust things. So you can say, well, what if, what if we're talking, you know, 5%, right? It starts to get crazy after 10 years. What if you're talking, what if the interest rate goes up to 9%? Then obviously this has a significant impact. You could also change things because we have this in the base year of the 8,000, for example. That's how our system is set up and for a starting point. We could do our calculations thusly. You can change the years here, but that's a little bit more difficult because clearly our tables on this side are only going down to 10 years, but our future cost here will show the result for, for that as well. And notice when you talk to other people, they'll probably only do this but it's really actually kind of nice to see the increase and say, okay, what is happening each year? Yeah, it's going up by, you know, 100 to 200 dollars, you know, each year or whatever. That gives you a better visual kind of understanding of what's going on.